Hey guys, this video is kind of complicated because it shows you how to do three separate things that are really closely related, so they really do belong in one video. But uh, yeah, it's kind of complicated, so I figured I should make this intro before you watch the video. And the video is after this part, it's in the same video, not a separate video on YouTube. So anyways, this video is going to show you how to make a button act like a toggle switch, so like every time you press it, it either opens or closes the door. It doesn't just hold the door temporarily and then close it again. Uh, the second thing it's going to show you to do, how to do is make a button do two separate things on each press. So let's say the first press it opens the door, and the second press it activates a minecart booster. Uh, it'll show you how to do that. And the third thing it's going to show you how to do is combine the two, so that when you press it, it either opens or closes the door. And on the second press, it'll activate the minecart booster. So those are the three things this video will show you how to do. And I figured I should make this intro because it's complicated, and let's get the video rolling because I know you want to watch the video now. Hey guys, in this Minecraft redstone tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a button act as a toggle switch, which is basically just a lever, but instead of having a lever, you have a button, which you probably think is useless. You can just put a lever, but this can be used for like puzzle maps or something because the person will think, oh, I pushed the button. Whatever happened is all that's going to happen, but if they push it again, something else will happen. So that can be useful, or this can be useful in that case. So this is what it's going to be like. This is what I'm going to build, just a toggle switch. Push the button once, the door opens. Push the button again, the door closes, and I can just keep doing it all I want. Yawn, 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 I know. <laughs> so now I'm going to show you how to build it. So first off, we need to put the button somewhere. Let's put it here. And then we need redstone coming out of it. And we're going to connect that to two AND gates. And why am I at 40 FPS? Who knows? <laughs> oh well. Um, so to make AND gates, you just have those three blocks and three torches with redstone in the middle. So now we have two AND gates, and now, let me see over here, okay, now we need to make the memory cell and memory cell circle. Um, okay, I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to make it really, really big, just for demonstration purposes, although that's not really possible from over here. Let's see. Now I can make it really big. <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably good. I do want it centered, though. Oh, well, this doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there's our memory cell circle. And now we need a memory cell. which we will put over here. And I need a door or something that can be toggled. A door would be good. And just to make it easier to see. Oops, don't want one there. Pretend that's a door frame. Why is that not working? There we go. No, what are you doing? Who knows? Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> okay, so we have our memory cell circle and a memory cell. Now we need to connect these AND gates to different places on the memory cell circle. So, this one will, let's see, we'll have it come from over here. That probably doesn't reach. Let's put a repeater there. Actually, no. That would be more sensible. And let's do the same thing on this side. It 
And the reason I said that the repeater over there would be more sensible is just because I want to make sure that any 15s don't get... Like, Redstone only goes 15 blocks. I want to make sure that we don't run into that issue. So, now we have an, a line coming from each side of the memory cell circle into each of the AND gates on the sides, the opposite side of where the button's going in. And now we need lines coming out from the AND gates. And that is in my way. So if this one is on, then when I push the button, I want that to turn off, which means I want that side to be powered. So we'll connect it to the opposite side of where it's coming from. So it's coming from the off side, and we're going to the on side from the AND gate. And we'll do the same here. And I need to connect it to the other side. So let's build it like this. Um, we want to connect it to the off portion of the memory cell circle. How do I want to get there? <laughs> let's just do it like this. Um, oops, wrong block. Oh, it's already getting dark. There we go. So now it's connected to the off portion once I put redstone up here. And I am going to put repeaters because I don't want the signal running out at any point. That's not going to work. Oh, that'll work. So do it like this. There we go. I'm not going to bother counting 15 blocks, even though redstone goes 15 blocks. So, yeah. Let's see. What else do I need? Um, oh yeah, okay, I know what I need, but it's this is not going to work. I'm going to show you why. See, the door just opens and then closes. That is because we don't have enough delay. So we the one the lines that are going into the AND gate need to have delays in them. So there's one delay, there's two delays, three delays at max um, delay. <laughs> and then this one also needs three delays. Okay, and now it should work. Let's see, does it work? The door stays open. And the door stays closed. The reason you need those delays is because the without those delays, the line gets detected too early when the door is either open or closed, so it switches back because the other AND gate gets activated on accident. I'm pretty sure that didn't make any sense, but just know you need those. I'm not sure how many you need or what kind of delay, like if they need to be at four or three. All I know is that works because it was the first one I tried. So anyways, this works and it doesn't actually have that much delay, which is good. So that is how you build a toggle switch. Now let's say you don't want a toggle switch. Let's say that you want it to open the door and then the second time you push the button, it... I don't know. What can we do with redstone? Activate a minecart thingy. Let's do that instead. So this output, instead of going to here, would actually go um, somewhere else. Yes. Let's have it go... I'm going to break this bond just so you know it's not doing anything there. We're going to have it go over here, just to have it go somewhere else for demonstration purposes. Okay, so now the AND gate that... Um, gosh, how do I explain this? 
Okay, this is the off portion of the memory cell circle, this line. And then out of that comes this line, which goes over here to the AND gate. The output from that AND gate is the one that we change if we want the door to be closed. If you want it to be open, you do the other one. So, let's see, power minecart thingy majig. Oh, there it was. There we go. So that is currently off, door is currently closed. Let's go do some testing. Push the button. The door should now be open. And that is still unpowered. Now if we push the button again, the door is still open. And this is still unpowered. Why not why is that still unpowered? Oh right, I know why. I know why. It has nothing to do with the repeater needing to be here. But I'm just going to put it, because I don't want 15 blocks happening unexpectedly. So I know why that happened. We need to build another memory cell circle. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's build one. Put that there. Um, oops. I'm pretty sure it doesn't need to be this big. I'm just making everything big for examples purposes, demonstration purposes. And then we need something coming out of the memory cell circle. So that you see this is the memory cell circle I have made. Um, gosh, I haven't made a video in so long. I'm getting really bad at this right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. Oops, put that one. We want to invert to this signal so that it's off. There we go. And just to reset the door, I'm going to do that temporarily. Okay, the door is now closed and this is not activated. So there we go. You can actually have both joins so that the door closes and the other track piece turns on. But anyways, and I'm going to show you this should work. <laughs> the door is closed. The track piece is off. And if we push the button, the door should open and the track piece should stay off. So now the door is open and the track piece is off. If we push the button again, The door is still open, and now the track piece is on. And I have no idea what's going to happen if we push the button the third time, so let's find out. It might do nothing. It does nothing! Okay. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you do two things in one video. <laughs> um, oh, I could show you guys this. But anyways, in case you want to stop watching here, that is how you make a button do two different things with two different presses. And the other option is making it a toggle switch where it toggled the door open and closed. Now I'm going to make it do both. So I'm going to actually take that off so it doesn't affect the track. And okay, that froze. I hope I can get that back in sync because I'm using Audacity, not Fraps for my voice. But anyways, I just reset the track by destroying this piece because this was on, and then I put it back, the track. I reset the memory cell circle for the track. Now I can reconnect to that. And, um, oh wait, no, I can't. I gotta push the button to reset the door. Door is closed, track is off, and now I can put this back on. So now when I push the button, the door is open, the track is off, and when I push it again, the door is closed and the track is on. And if I push it again, the door should open, the track should stay on. Yes, the door is open and the track is still on. 
So now it's a toggle for the door, and it turns on the track on the second press. Um, if you want to have it do more presses... Oh. Oops. <laughs> if you want to have it do more presses, I don't know what to do. I would have to think about that quite a bit. It'd probably just be more memory cell circles. So that when you press it on the third try, it goes to a different memory cell circle. Fourth try, a different memory cell circle, something like that. That's probably what I would have to do. But anyways, I hope this was a good video and it actually made sense to you. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, all criticism or all feedback is helpful, including criticism. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, guys, until next time, bye.